part of the lands belonging to the See of Derry, and which he was subsequently authorised by an Act of Parliament to let at a reasonable rent. The Reverend James Knox was headmaster at that time and held the post for 40 years. He took the position aged 38 in 1794. The new school opened its door at Eden Ballymore, a fine Georgian building on Monday 29th of August 1814. It was set out on a height above the Strand. The name Foyle College was produced shortly thereafter and eventually superseded the old names the Free Grammar School and the Diocesan School of Derry. The name Foyle College was first suggested by a pupil who attended the school at both sites, who subsequently entered Trinity and moved to Australia and became in time the acting colonial secretary of the Swan River Colony, later Western Australia. He was George Fletcher Moore, and his claim to be the author of the name Foyle College is substantiated by Robert Simpson in his Annals of Derry of 1847. The new school drew many of its pupils from the oldest families in Ulster, but also drew many from the business classes in Derry. The number of pupils in the school in 1818 was 110, 54 of whom were boarders. By 1825, numbers had fallen to 96, and although a very flattering report on the school was made by the Commissioners of Irish Education Inquiry into diocesan schools, it appeared that the school was already in decline. The numbers dwindled and by 1834 there were no borders, but the number of free school places had been increased to 30 by Mr Knox really to keep the school alive. The decline of the school was due principally to the fact that Mr Knox was advancing in years but he could not retire as there was no superannuation scheme. Eventually, the headship passed to the Reverend Willie Smith, who came from Oma. This is an interesting photograph taken by the famous Mr. Alexander Rayton. It shows a foil before Lawrence Hill was opened up. There emerged in Knox's earlier years names which will always be associated with Foyle College, namely the four Lawrence brothers, Alexander, George, Henry and John, and Robert Montgomery. Each of these four Lawrence brothers, nephews of the Reverend James Knox headmaster, sought a career in India, and these careers, all distinguished, formed a considerable family achievement. Alexander William Lawrence from 1803 to 1868 started Foyle 31st of January 1815 and Alexander went on to become the General Lawrence of the Madras Cavalry. George St. Patrick Lawrence was born on the 17th of March 1805 and lived until 1884. He started foil on the 31st of January 1815 and went on to become General Sir George St. Patrick Lawrence of the Bengal Army. Henry Montgomery Lawrence, 1806-1857, started foil on the same day as his two older brothers, 31st of January 1815. He was to go on to become Major General Sir Henry Lawrence of the Bengal Army. Henry, the hero of Lucknow, died at his post in the early days of the mutiny at the age of 51, a KCB and already designated to succeed as the next Governor General of India. John Laird Mayor Lawrence, 1811-1879, started foil in January 1823 and was there until 1825. John was to become Lord Lawrence of the Punjab and to rule as Governor General from 1864 to 1869. His statue is now, after at least six moves, standing at the entrance of the new Springham campus in the waterside. The Lawrence Medal, recalling the connection of the three brothers who rose to greatness, was first awarded in 1937-38. I think it is a matter of great regret that the eldest brother, Alexander, was not thought worthy to be included. 
In the school, there is a simple brass tablet unveiled in 1925 by Bishop Montgomery. It is set in an oak frame bearing the names of the Lawrence brothers and Robert Montgomery with their dates at the school and concluding this tablet was placed here by the boys of Foyle College 100 years after John Lawrence left the school. Robert Montgomery also attended the school at this time. He was born in London Street, grew up around Moville and he came to the free school in the 19th of May 1819 and he was there with a short break until 1824. He was the father of Bishop Montgomery, Anglican Bishop of Tasmania and grandfather of Viscount Montgomery of Alamein. Leaving the school in 1824, he spent his life on the civil side of affairs in India. Sir Robert twice received the thanks of Parliament for his work as an Indian administrator. He too gave his name to one of the school's houses. On the right is the family Bible presented to the school. In this register, Field Marshal Monty's name can be seen. The Reverend W.P. Robinson was headmaster from 1866 to 1873. He was influenced by the work of Arnold of Rugby and he built the school's chapel and tried to make it the centre of the school's life. It contained a gallery for the school servants and above which housed the organ. A table from the chapel is still in use today and can be seen with a brass plate with the inscription This table belonged to the chapel of Foyle College 1872 to 1877. A relative of Robinson now came to the school to improve his mathematics, William Piercy French. French possibly best known for his songs such as The Mountains of Morn, Are You Right There Michael and Slattery's Mounted Foot, was also famous as a performer and a watercolour artist. He was at Foyle for only two years, 1870 to 72, but we dearly hold on to that connection. Piercy was born at Clooney Quinn in County Ross Common and graduated eventually from Trinity with a degree in engineering. At one stage he was an inspector of drains before the call to the world of entertainment won through. Here we can see his two daughters Etty and Joan who visited the school quite recently and presented a book a prize which Piercy had won for mathematics. The young girl on the beach is his daughter Etty. John Ross, son of the minister of Carlisle Road Presbyterian Church, a friend of French at Foyle and Trinity, and in later life said of French, his coming to Foyle was a great joy for the whole school. He was by no means industrious. French and Ross wrote several songs together, including Andy McElroy, and contributed to the school's magazine, The Birch. Sir John Ross was the last Lord Chancellor of Ireland and the first President of the Old Boys Association. Morris C. Heim was the headmaster from 1877 to 1896 and the first layman to take charge of the school. He was well known as an advocate of moral suasion, as a substitute for corporal punishment and as an author of Latin and Greek grammars and several vigorously written books on educational and general subjects. From 1868, Foyle College had had to compete with a vigorous rival school, the Londonderry Academical Institution or the Academy as it was popularly known. It had been established by a body of influential local merchants, nearly all of them Presbyterians, who considered that more attention should be paid to the needs of the boys who were to go into business than was possible in Foyle College. The headmaster of which was proposing to close the English department as it was creating difficulties in administration for a dominantly classical school. The academy began in a private house in the East Wall and moved in 1871 to a newly erected building in Academy Road. In its early days and throughout its time it laid some stress on commercial training. One of its departments was called the Commercial and Mathematical Department. Its main work was done along similar lines to those of Foyle College. 
the Irish Society, which contributed to the funds of both schools, FOIL as the older foundation being the more favoured, observed the duplication of work, proposed that the two schools should unite to form one strong school, and they undertook to endow it liberally. There were long negotiations which eventually issued in the passing in 1896 of the FOIL College Act. The United School retaining the name and retaining the traditions of the older school. The 1814 building, called the Lower School by the Boys, was now employed for the purposes of tuition. The other building in Academy Road was known as the Upper School, and here were the swimming baths, gymnasium, cricket and football fields, as well as the boarding establishment. The amalgamation of foil with the LAI was not without resistance.